for a quarterback other than Connor Wigman to win the starting quarterback job, they have to prove that their arm is just as valuable as their legs. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. So, today we're going to talk a little bit about the quarterback position. We haven't talked about quarterbacks in a while. And I wanted to discuss, you know, it's a conversation we've had here a ton at Locked On Aggies. As you every day know, I always say, I think this is Connor Wigman's job to lose. I think he's going to be the guy. But I think the way that Jalen Henderson or Marcel Reed takes over for Connor Wigman is with their arm. And and some might say, well, you know, Andrew, I think that their value comes from how quick they are and how, how good they are running the football, and that's true. But I think that they have to prove that they can sustain a balance there. And I think Henderson, during his time, proved he can throw it and run it. I think Marcel Reed proved – um, I mean, it was, of course, a smaller sample size for Reed because it was just that bowl game, but he looked really good throwing the football and really good running the football. But they have to prove that their ability to throw the football is equal to Connor Wigman's. Because you've got to remember, Connor Wigman is not a, a bad athlete. He can move with the football. He is quick. He's athletic. He's not quite as quick as Henderson or Reed. So... You know, if you've got if you've got Connor Wigman's legs are here, and then Reed and 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 Henderson's legs are a little bit higher, but Connor Wigman's arm is here, and Reed and Henderson's arm is a lot lower, then I'm taking Connor Wigman in that race because once again, he is. I think we forget how he's pretty athletic. You know, he's not your normal quarterback who's a good passer most quarterbacks that are you know pocket passers or statues they can't move without with with, um, with the football outside of the pocket Wigman is quick he's athletic and he can run the ball in all honesty I mean it's truly he's a very athletic quarterback so Henderson and Reed I think are quicker than he is they're both because they're both lightning fast but I also think that I'm t- right now, as we sit right now, I am taking Connor Rigman's arm over their arms. You know, we've seen them. Now, this is what spring's for. This is what summer's for. This is what f- quarterback battles are for. It's to figure this stuff out. This is what we're going to figure out. That's what I think about Connor Rigman's arm and about these quarterbacks' arms. But is that accurate? That's what we're going to find out over the next few uh, months. So, you know, and as I talk about all the time, I really, I hope that there is a quarterback battle. I think quarterback battles are so great for everybody. I just think, and I'm not saying if Connor Wigman is named the starter that, you know, he's not going to try hard. He's not going to practice. That's nowhere near my saying that. What I am saying is I think it. And I've said this a million times here on the show, but I think it's always great to be looking over your shoulder. Always great to be looking over your shoulder. You don't want people to be, to feel good where they're at. You always want somebody going, if I don't work hard today, if I don't practice hard today, this guy behind me could take my job. You always want your players looking over their shoulder because it's, that's what makes you compete. It's what makes you show up every day and work hard. Now, some players, 
just have that naturally where they don't really need to worry about it. They don't really, they, you know, they're not like, well, people are, are naturally motivated. And, and perhaps, and I think Conor Green is that guy, but it never hurts to have somebody, you know, right on your heels in a race to where you're, you're really, really working your behind off to win a starting job. And I, once again, and I say this a ton too, I always, I feel really good about where Texas A&M's quarterback room is. You know, a season ago, we felt good about Connor Wigman. We felt good about Max Johnson. Both of them go down with injuries. We didn't know much about Henderson. Now, I think that Henderson is equal to Max Johnson. You could, some might say a little bit better. Some might say he's a little bit worse. I think you could say they're pretty equal quarterbacks. And then I think you could say Marcel Reed is better than what we thought we had in Jalen Henderson last year. And what I mean by that is we didn't know what Jalen Henderson was. I mean, there was not a ton of tape. We did not know the type of player he was. When he came to Texas A&M, I remember I I had a show about it, and we were like, what's what's Jimbo doing? Is he worried about his quarterbacks? Is he just adding somebody for the future? What's the plan here? And, of course, hey – I'm pretty stoked that Jimbo and company brought in Henderson because he's a pretty darn good quarterback and he's a great player to have on this roster. But, you know, I think that these three guys are an elite quarterback room. It was funny. I actually saw a uh, list. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I've talked about this on the show, but it was ranking quarterback rooms in the SEC and Texas a and was way too low. Because when you're ranking quarterback rooms, the point of that is depth. Not a lot of teams have this kind of depth. They just don't. A lot of teams might have a, have an elite top-end quarterback, but then behind that quarterback, who do they got? That's kind of my point here. So when it comes to depth at the quarterback position, it is hard to you know, convince me that there's a handful of schools with better depth than Texas A&M. I mean, the depth of this position is just truly elite. You've got a really good two or a really good young quarterback in Marcel Reed. You've got a really good quarterback who's played a few games now in the SEC and Jalen Henderson. And then you've got Connor Rigman, who I think can be a literal superstar. So this room is pretty stacked. I mean, genuinely, from top to bottom. Who ends up winning this job? Y'all know that I still think it's going to be Connor Wigman. I really do. I don't have a ton of I wouldn't say – I don't know if concern's the right word. I think the right word might be – I just – I think Jalen Henderson's going to win this job, and I feel pretty confident about that. I think he's a really good player. Um, did I say Jalen Henderson? If I did – you ever think you said something you can't remember? I obviously meant to say Connor Rickman. If I said Jalen Henderson, that is not what I would say. But if I didn't, disregard. Um, I think Connor Rickman is going to win this job. I'm not too concerned about it. I think he's he's better than these other guys. I, I really do think the season that Connor Wigman's going to have could potentially lead to him moving on to the NFL. That's how good I think he is. Now, you know, I think that it might take him a little bit longer to prove what he's got. I don't know. You know, if he has an elite season this year, I think one more year in college would probably benefit Connor Wigman just because he hasn't had a ton of, you know, Freshman year, he plays a few games. Sophomore year, plays a couple games, gets hurt. Junior year, we assume he's going to be out there all every game, healthy, looking great. I think one more year could benefit him. But I do think that having Henderson and Reed stick around is going to be great. But the problem is with this new world of college football, I just don't know if that happens. I just don't know if those two guys stick around knowing what college football is today, knowing players move on a ton. So, you know, be ready for that. You could see one of these guys head out after this season, which would stink, but it's just the reality of college football now. Um, so, yeah, I think this quarterback battle is positive, but I think what it's going to take for a quarterback for Henderson or, or Marcel Reed to overtake Connor Wigman is one of them to prove that their arm is just about as good. Now, when I say arm, I'm not talking arm strength. I'm talking accuracy, um, accuracy, touch ability to throw the ball in different ways and, you know, different velocity, like all these different things that make it quarterback. you got to prove that you are equal or just about equal to Connor Wigman or that your legs are that much better 
um, that it's worth having you out there instead of the veteran quarterback. So as always, y'all let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. I'm curious to hear where, where our head's at. Um, I want to hear what y'all are thinking. So now we are going to talk a little bit about this basketball game coming up against Ole Miss. And I've got concerns, ladies and gentlemen, for this team making the NCAA tournament. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live um, TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or call or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Now, they also have Fire Channels. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver const, a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the games, analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with the latest world of sports, March Madness, and the NBA. So, you know, you got to go check it out. If you, you can learn more about this at amazon.com slash locked on fire TV, that's amazon.com slash locked on fire TV to learn more about this. Fire Stick, Fire TV channels, it's all great stuff. Really enhances your TV watching ability. Go check them out. So Texas A&M has a game on the hardwood against Ole Miss coming up. Road game against Ole Miss in Oxford. And, you know, interestingly enough, on the ESPN matchup predictor, they have Texas A&M as a slight favorite. You know, this game is going to be a pick em at um 50.2% chance to win this game. And I really do think that you could see the Aggies win this one. You know, you lost a game that you shouldn't have lost to Ole Miss earlier this year at home. Wade Taylor had 30 points. It was a game where you missed 10 free throws. You shoot 30% from three, 40% from the field. Um, but, I mean, missing 10 free throws in, in the, in the three-point loss is the difference. So, uh, yeah, in that game, Wade Taylor had 30 points. If, if you want to have any kind of chance to make the tournament, you have to win this basketball game. So Ole Miss has some guards who can score the basketball. They've got three guards who are averaging 10 points per game or more. So they can they can score the basketball. They're shooting 37.3% from three. They average 75.6 points per game. I know that they block some shots. They've got some solid guys down low, and they've got some some guards who can play some veteran guards as well, um, just like Texas A&M does. You know, veteran guard. It's going to be veteran guards versus veteran guards, and you know, I think that I think Texas A&M wins this basketball game. But the question is going to be, does it matter? I mean, if you lose this game, unless you win the SEC tournament, you're done. You are not going to make the NCAA tournament if you lose this basketball game. I think that's just the point you've put yourself in, which is so frustrating. You know, if you look back on this, you go, okay, you've got a, a one-point loss to Arkansas. You've got the three-point loss to Ole Miss. You've got the – I think there's a few more close losses. Yeah, the one-point loss to Vandy that's going to haunt nightmares forever – Seven or whatever point, six point loss, seven point loss to Arkansas, the two point loss to South Carolina. I mean, these games are just going to haunt you. How many close games you played? And it's funny, I think if just one of these flips, one of these flips in your direction, Texas AM makes the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, I think um, 10 and 8 gets you in, gets you in the SEC tournament. So, I just I hate some of these close losses, but it's just the reality. So now you have to win this game to finish nine and nine in conference. If you do that, 
I think that you have a chance, a chance. That is the key word, a chance make tournament. So we'll break down this game a little bit more, but I want to kind of get into the way this looks. So, you know, Texas A&M, I think that they're in a really bad spot. They're no longer in the first four out or the next four out, which means that there are eight teams ahead of them to make the tournament. And I just don't I just don't see how one win over Ole Miss is going to change that. And we know, we know that the conference tournaments don't matter. I mean, they just don't. I just don't think they matter. The team or um I mean Texas AM has been on the wrong end of that many times. We've seen that. Texas AM goes on a run in in Nashville and it just doesn't end up mattering. So I mean, maybe if you win, you know, you win this game against Ole Miss, and then if you win two games in Nashville, they'll they'll sneak you in. But I just I just don't see this team making the tournament where we sit right now. And I hate that. I mean, I think it's gonna take a run in the tournament. I really and I mean, is that possible? Yeah, this team's done it before. They have veterans that have played in this SEC tournament before. They're starting to play more as a team, spread the basketball around more. So I think maybe if they kind of get going doing that, you could see this team make a run in the tournament. But I, I I don't know if just this win over Ole Miss on the road, if you were to win this game and go 9-9 nine and nine in SEC play, I don't know if that's going to end up being enough to get Texas A&M in the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, winning this game is a start. That's a start. That is is a is a is a move in the right direction. Taking care of business in this basketball game is a good way to get started. But I think you got to do it. You got to win this game. If you lose this game, pack it in. I mean, unless of course you win the SEC tournament, because then you're obviously in the tournament. If you lose this game, that's it. If you win this game, you have a very 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 small chance. And it kind of depends how you know what people do value the SEC tournament as. And I, to me, I don't think it's much. I don't think people, I don't think the committee cares about the SEC tournament. And if that's true, where Texas A&M is now that they've slipped out of the even next four out, I think they're in a really rough spot when it comes to making the tournament. So, you know, win this game, you got some older players who aren't going to be around. So I hate that. So, you know, win this game, Go make a run in the tournament. Do something. Try and do something special. It's the month of March. Crazy things happen. Crazy runs happen. This is a talented you know, basketball team. We know who they were supposed to be. It just hasn't clicked. I don't think the offense has been there. Let's see if Coach Buzz Williams can kind of turn things around at the tail end of the season. That would be really good to, to see. Um, but, yeah, Ole Miss, they're a team that they can shoot it. They have some guards who can play. They have a couple guys down low who are pretty good. But, um, I, you know, I think that, that Ole Miss and, and Texas A&M are pretty evenly, uh, you know, pretty even basketball teams. We saw that in the first game of Reed Arena. We're going to see that when the two teams meet in Oxford. But I have a feeling, I mean, Texas A&M is playing good ball right now. You beat Georgia. You beat Mississippi State in games. You have to win to even have a chance. I think this team's done a good job with backs against the wall, fighting and saying, you know, we're going to do the best we can to at least give ourselves a chance. Um, so I think Texas A&M wins this game. I think they split the season series with Ole Miss, and I think hopefully they have some confidence heading to Music City to do something special in Nashville. And if they do something special in Nashville, maybe just maybe this team will sneak in the tournament. But right now, if I had to give you my percent chance that Texas A&M makes the NCAA tournament, I'm going to say 3%. So I am not very confident in any way that this team makes a tournament, but all they can do now is fight, and, and, and step one is beating Ole Miss. So, you know, we'll talk about that game. I will be in Nashville for the tournament, so I'll be able to cover that a little bit. If this team makes a run, it will be a lot of fun. We have a few mailbag questions about all three sports. We're going to answer those questions and a few more coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. <clears throat> when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. 
LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Give It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. You know, LinkedIn jobs is something that I use personally. I've used to um, to get jobs before. I've used to hire before. So I highly recommend checking out LinkedIn jobs. We're getting ready to talk about a recruit. There's no better place to recruit new employees than LinkedIn jobs. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Also, I just wanted to add this Brian Smith, the recruiting guy. Um, I wasn't able to make my schedule work with his this week. Next week, because I'm going to be leaving for Nashville, we will have a recruiting episode. So I'm sorry about that. I really, We're going to do everything we can to make that every week thing. Brian um, has been traveling with um, different recruiting things, recruiting, you know, events. And so and so he's had less days, part of make that work. But we're going to have one next week because I'm going to be traveling to Nashville on Friday. So I will have to pre-record that probably on Wednesday or Thursday. So a couple mailbag questions. So the first one is on the baseball team, what are the weaknesses? And, you know, what's funny right now, and this is a good thing, of course, but I haven't seen a weakness yet, personally. And if y'all have seen one, let me know in the comments. Uh, maybe y'all disagree, and, and there's that you have seen a weakness that you that you want to uh, share in the comments. Let me know. But to this point, I haven't seen a weakness in this baseball team. Now it's baseball. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. Whether your weakness is the injury bug, your weakness is the bullpen isn't great in SEC play. The bats aren't alive. The starters don't pan out like we think they are. A weakness will show up. Every baseball team has a weakness. The key is, is your weakness not that big of a deal compared to some other teams? And if that's – because, you know, once again, every team you play, Florida, LSU, all these top teams, Wake Forest, they're all going to have a weakness, every single one. The, like I said, the key is having your weakness not be as substantial as their weakness. That is – the whole situation. If that's reality, then you're in a good spot. So the goal, like I said, is for whatever weakness shows up and one will show up. That's just how the game works. The goal is for that weakness to not be as problematic as some other teams. So the next question now on to basketball is what does Buzz have to do, you know, in the off season to, to fix this, to, to fix the issues this season. And once again, I've talked a little bit about this. You know, I think that what you have to do is you have to fix the offense. I think this team, the rebounding is great. The way he teaches rebounding, the way he says, Hey, you got If you want to play, you got to rebound the basketball. I think all that's great, but I think that you got to get more quality offense. I think that having two guards, as I've said many times, kind of dribble in circles and not really run an offense of any kind, just dribble around. You know, I watched Missouri play the other day. I haven't watched Missouri play a ton. And if you watch Missouri play, you want to know why they're so bad? Because they don't move the basketball. They play just ISO, ISO basketball. They dribble in circles. They spin around. They do a whole bunch of random stuff. And they try, you know, and they try and play one-person basketball. That doesn't work. And I think that at times Texas A&M does the same thing with – Boots and, and Wade Taylor, they kind of just dribble the ball in circles until they find a shot that they think is a good shot, and sometimes it's not a good shot. I think the key is going to be, you know, putting together an offense that can move the ball, move the basketball around, while keep doing things, you know, play good defense, keep passing the ball. I mean, keep um, getting rebounds, and that stuff's great. That helps. Defense and rebounding wins basketball games, but you also have to have the other intangible details, which is being able to shoot, being able to move the basketball, all of those important details. So next question here, and it could be the last one, but is, um, you know, this recruit who's on Long Street, what are Texas A&M's chances with him? So somebody commented that day, I don't know if it was an Auburn fan or a Texas A&M fan, 
and said Auburn is in the lead for Longstreet, and I just don't believe that's true. Um, you know, Steve Wolfong, who is like never wrong ever, put in a crystal ball for Longstreet to land at Texas A&M. And, of course, he just had a commitment date for April. So um, I think like April 14th, I believe, maybe. I have to double-check that. But um, we'll, of course, talk about that before it happens. But I think Texas A&M is the team to be beaten for Longstreet. I think that they're in a really good spot with this with this uh, California kid right now. I think that, I mean, once again, and, and all I know is, is you know, Brian, our recruiting guy, said the same thing. He feels he thinks that he's heard some chatter on Texas A&M with this kid. But at the same time, when it comes to Steve Wolfong putting in a um, crystal ball, you know that that is legit. And, and he put one in, and, and I think that Texas A&M lands this kid. So I think that the Aggies are in – are the front runners to land this kid right now. But we'll, of course, ask Brian more about him when he comes on the show next week. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Enjoy some basketball. We'll find out more about this baseball team this weekend. We'll find out what the deal is in the SEC basketball tournament this weekend, and we will break all of that down next week. Everybody have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday.